All right, man, we back on gaming. And let me let me say this week. This week is just it's the same. Companies trying to screw you, and fans getting all excited to be screwed over. That's right. There was a number of things that this week I had to cut out this video. I mean, especially with the community, people acting the fool in the community. Uh, a couple of controversies that we cannot talk about just yet. More than likely, we'll talk about them next week, okay? So, let's just talk about what we have today. And we're going to start the SJWs. Because, not too long ago, we talked about Lady in the Bind, didn't we? Didn't we? Lady Killer in the Bind. And we talked about how it was, you know, the hypocrisy of the media pushing Lady Killer in the Bind. And, you know, because it was, you know, one of them making it, it was okay. So, it should have got the same treatment same backlash as other companies who are not in their inner circle, right? Okay. So I guess it all came full circle this week because Lady Killer in a Bind has been censored. That's right. It's been censored by SJWs. That's right. They're eating their own at this point. Now, this is a win-win for gamers. And as far as I'm concerned, this is what happens when you get too oversensitive because if SJWs didn't scream for censorship, then they would look like hypocrites. Now they say, you know, they're screaming censorship, they're devouring their own, which means they'll go after anybody. There's no allegiance at this point. You know what I mean? So, it's a win-win for gamers who don't buy into their bullshit. It really is. They put, they put them in a box, pretty much, and they had to do something. They had to. So they gotta stick with their moral code, I guess. But after all the reviews, you know, and, and glorious reviews it got from media, I mean, that was enough to, to, to sink it already. It really was. But it's, it's funny to see it get censored. I mean, it barely had anybody playing the game when it wasn't censored. Now no one's really going to play the game because it's censored. So, win-win as far as I'm concerned. But we have another sensitive group that's on the rise. That's right. It's not just SJWs anymore. No, no, no. Now we have to talk about vegans. That's right. Vegans and being upset at video games because this woman is so upset. She's going to stop playing this game because it took her to Bacon City. Now look, first off, if you're going to be this sensitive over something, stay the fuck away from our game. Stay away from our hobby. Please, stay away. Now, I will say, to be fair, I know a number of vegans. I do. You know, they're the type of people who really don't push their lifestyle on anybody. So if you're eating stuff in front of them that they don't like, they're not going to say anything about it. They don't care. You know what I mean? And seeing this, they didn't care about this either. So it goes to show you that it's not all vegans, to be fair. But to see people get this sensitive over... Over this, this is what you're getting sensitive over. I don't know if you're just getting sensitive or you just want attention. I'm not sure which one it is. Either way, stay the fuck out of our, our video games. I mean, let's put it like this. You want to sit here and say, I wish they'd have thought more about this and us, and, and I'm not going to play this game anymore. The company don't care. They got your money. You bought the game. They don't care if you stop playing. They just don't. They don't care if you trade it in. They don't care what you do. You set the shit on fire if you want, all right? Be a video. They don't care. They got your money. You make yourself look like an idiot. But... Speaking of companies who are looking for your money or just don't care these days, let's talk about Bandai Namco. Or should we call them Bamco? Let's talk about Tekken 7. That's right. Now, look. Tekken 7 I'm very upset with. Not because of what his, you know, you know, the game itself because I'm a huge Tekken fan. But what Bandai Namco tried to pull. And it's sad because fans are hyped for this. I don't understand it. How do you get hyped for getting lied to? For those who don't know what I'm talking about, I want you to see exactly what Bandai Namco said and how they're going back on their word with Tekken. So you're getting the most complete and quality game, right? That's what they said? Fam, you hitting us with pre-order characters? Most complete. Really, I mean, at this point, you might as well just hit us with the season pass, right? I mean, jokingly, you should, right? Oh, wait, wait. You're, you're not taking me seriously, are you? Fam, you you lying? You you really lying right now, aren't you? You gonna sit here and tell me that this game needs a season pass, exclusive season pass? You have to understand, pre-ordered content, all right, on the disc, already here, pre-ordered exclusive or whatever, on the disc, plus your season pass. Now, people, if you saw it, it said most complete. That's the word you gotta be looking for. Complete. This is complete then. You're going back on your word, and people are like, oh, well, they're learning from you know Street Fighter, so that you know they don't make the same mistakes. They're making the same fucking mistakes, you understand it? Granted, you're probably going to have more game modes. You probably will, but this is uncalled for. You can't sit here and say this is going to be the most complete game, you know, for gamers. For gamers! 
And of course you know Martin's going to push it to the end of the moon. And Hip Hop Gamer's going to push it to the end of the moon. And everyone's going to push it to the end of the moon because everybody wants to be known. You know what I mean? And get that attention from companies. But you got to be kidding me that this is complete. It's not. You're lying. You're lying right to gamers and people are eating this shit up. I don't understand it. I really don't. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of, te uh, fan of Tekken. But this is uncalled for. It just is. And you cannot tell me that this is okay. You can't. I'm not trying to hear this shit. Let's move on, shall we? Injustice 2. As if we haven't heard enough bad news with Injustice 2. Here's some news for you who want to try it out. Uh, the Injustice 2 beta, uh, has, uh, there's a registration for it. So if you're interested in Injustice 2, I'll put the link in the info bar for you. But as we know, last week we talked about Injustice 2 and all the bullshit they're pulling. It seems like everyone is just going to fall for this shit over and over. This is why I keep telling you. Standards. When you have a standard, and when these companies decide, once you give them an inch, and they're all of a sudden going to take a mile, you got to let them know, no, we're not going to have this shit. But instead, people justify it, because they want to justify their purchase, or their fandom, and then tell you that you're wrong for having fucking common sense. I, I, don't, I don't understand this at all. At all. But hey, it is what it is, I guess. Unfucking real though. You do not need a season pass. You didn't need a season pass for Street Fighter. You didn't need a season pass for Tekken. You don't need pre-order content. Like I said, remember, our pre-order content wasn't taking characters out the fucking game and saying, if you pre-order it now, we'll give it to you. We'll dangle it in front of you because it is in your game, but you can't have it yet. We'll dangle it in front of you, and if you pre-order, then we'll give it to you. Instead, our pre-order content was art books and, and soundtracks and things that people actually wanted. I don't get it. I don't. The, the, the industry has become so lazy, and gamers have just become so complacent, it feels as though no one gives a shit anymore. No one, no one cares. Well, I'm not worried about that. I'm getting ready for Evo, son. We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? Let's move on, shall we? Just, oh my god. Speaking of Capcom, I'm not going to speak about a lot of Street Fighter news today, because the, the shit that I've seen is just, it's still depressing. They haven't fixed shit. I'm not getting to it this week. Um... We'll talk about it next week. How about that? But there is a piece of news I do have for you. Capcom teases Street Fighter Anniversary surprises for the summer. You want to surprise me, Capcom? Fix your game. Bottom line. End of story. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? All right? <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> How about this? Not too long ago, you guys and girls sent me some stuff because apparently you were out in Pennsylvania, Exton, PA, actually, and you were at the arcades. That's right. Round one arcades. For those who have not seen this place, let's take a look at it real quick. I've talked about round one before, but it looks really nice now. I put it like this. I think maybe I should shoot up there one day and see what's going on. Maybe see if they, you know, want to do some tournaments there. Because it seems like you have a place that has a lot of talent that is not being, uh, number one, it's not getting the attention it deserves, and it's not being used to its full capacity. So maybe I need to go up there and talk to some people and see what's going on. Okay. Uh, also, in more news, last week, the fighting game of the week, I have to talk about this, because some of you had said in the comment section, some of you sent me on Twitter, the fighting game of the week last week, um, Golden Fantasia X, I said, you know, this game really needs to come to the West, it, does, it hasn't got its, uh, its due, it deserves more, and then you guys and girls let me know that this game is now going to get, you know, it's about to be localized, and will be coming to the West on Steam, so that's a great update to hear, the game deserves more credit than, you know, than it's getting, so... But speaking of the fighting game of the week, I guess we can get into this. I said I wouldn't talk about Capcom and Street Fighter too much, but I think we need to talk about this, alright, because this is hilarious. I think that for those who have never played this game, especially in the arcade, because there's a difference between downloading the ROM now and playing it, as opposed to playing the arcade, when the controls are like, what the hell's going on, this isn't working, completely different. Let's see Street Fighter, the movie, that's right, let's look at the game for that. Perfect. 
Tyson. <laughs> Win. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Play. <laughs> Win. entire time even by another Raul Julia. You go figure, you know what I mean? But that's fight game of the week definitely does not need a remake. Some people already compared it. They were trying to compare it to Mortal Kombat back in the day without the fatalities. Like, y'all have to understand Street Fighter is about fatalities. And at this time and point in time, you get the mocap. It was just what was hot back then. That's what it was, you know what I mean? But it's hilarious to see how they did this game. And you know what? Even though it's a really bad game, still, you know what? You know what? Let's get into our next topic. How about that? Alright, first off, uh, Evo. Let's talk Evo. Because for those who don't know, I'm going to put a link in the info bar. Alright? A number of games have made Evo's list on what's going to be at Evo on the big screen. Alright? And then they give you, the fans, to vote for what game is the last one to get on there. Now, of course, you have to, um, you have to pay X amount of dollars to, um... To a charity, a donation charity, in order to get in, in order to have a vote, which, hey, as you know, it goes to a good cause, so that's not a big deal. You know what I mean? That's that's a great cause. So as far as I'm concerned, it's worth it. But Evo needs more of this. They do. I feel as though, and let's be honest here, all right. If more people, all right, voted in trolling players when it came to games that should be on the main stage, Evo would be so much more entertaining. It just would. Seriously, think about it. Could you imagine Fist of Fire on there? Could you imagine Pit Fighter on the big screen? Could you imagine Street Fighter the movie on the big screen? You have pros just sitting there like, why am I playing this? <laughs> why am I playing this? It would be hilarious. The troll would be in effect so well. And I'm sorry, but this is the, a, a great way to get games that are flying under the radar or are old and you, you forgot about them. Great way to get them back into the fold. You know what I mean? It's a great way. Now, granted, we are seeing so much salt already from this list that people are upset that Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 may not make the list. All right? They didn't say, well, there's a lot of anime games taking over. Hey, it's their time. It's their time. Let the, Just let the salt flow. Bathe in the salt. The bath salt, as far as I'm concerned. You've got to be kidding me that you're getting this upset because Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 isn't up on the big stage yet because it's behind in votes. At one point, it was leading in votes. It was, it was behind in votes, then leading in votes, and I think as of late, it's behind in votes again or something like that. I'm not sure. But to get upset over things like this, and I'm thinking to myself, we're to get ready to HD up Mar Ultimate Marvel's Capcom 3 anyway. So if it doesn't make it to Evo this year, you know they're going to push it for next year. You know that. All right? You know that. So there's no reason to put it out there. Not to mention Infinite when it comes out. And you know that's going to be an Evo as well. So as far as I'm concerned, people who are complaining about Ultimate Marvel's Capcom 3 possibly not making the list, you need to get over yourselves. You do. You really do. It's pathetic that you would do that. Let these other games breathe, man. Let them have their time at least. For, can you do it for one year at least? For one year, can you let these other games have their due? Can you? Is it possible? It's ridiculous that we're, sit we're sitting here and we're seeing this, you know, and people complaining. But the salt factor, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I can't, even get, I can't get mad. I can't get mad. So I'm hoping that this keeps going and keeps going just to see people salt. But the votes should be, it should be, they need to have more of this. They do. They need to have more of this. I would love to see so many bad games. I mean, seriously, bring Way of the Warrior to the big screen. I would love to see that. <laughs> I'll tell you, Pro Player Salt would be so great. It would. It just would. And you know they'll play anything for money. So, learning the game, they're just like, what 
the hell am I playing? You, you know it. You know, what's with these controls? I don't have all these options. I don't have new games. Yeah. You had to think about it, didn't you? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Also, in more fighting game news real quick, there was a huge Smash controversy not too long ago. You guys and girls sent it to me, but you said to yourself, it was a really long read. I didn't get a chance to really read into it yet. So, um, we'll leave that for next week, okay? When I can really sit down and read it and, and understand what's going on. Because there's a lot of moving parts, apparently, to this controversy. Um, so, I'll definitely talk about that next week. We will not talk about it this week, okay? Let's move on. We need to talk about Nintendo. First off, EA and their bullshit, alright? With Nintendo, with Nintendo. EA says that Nintendo has been listening to third parties with Switch. Okay, so you tell me Nintendo wasn't listening to third parties and, and, and wasn't asking for more third party support with the Wii U? Is that what you're going to tell me, EA? Or, or should we look at the, you know, the other companies and say, it's the third party's fault that we're going through this bullshit in the first place? For those who don't remember, alright? When it came to the PS4, we were getting that. And remember, third parties were pushing that. We need more tech. We need to, you know, push the envelope more. Remember that? PS4, Xbox One came out. And people were like, hmm, they don't have really that many games. So for you third parties who kept begging for all this new advanced technology and that you were going to use it and, 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 and max it out like you said you'd do with the PS3 and the 360, which you didn't, shoddy ports and all kinds of shit, now you just had to have more technology. So the companies gave it to you, right? And then you didn't max out the PS4, the Xbox One, and now we're having mid-cycle consoles, which you just keep parading over and over. This is going to be great. And right now, as we saw with the numbers, the gamers are actually leaving more consoles, possibly to go to PC, we don't know. But we've seen the numbers, we've seen the charts, that gamers are leaving the consoles. Maybe because of, you know, that. But you can't sit here and tell me that Nintendo is just listening to third-party companies, especially idiots like EA, who have screwed over Nintendo over and over again. It seems like they do more PR for Nintendo as of late than actually giving them games. I don't understand this. I don't. But as far as I'm concerned, companies shouldn't be listening to third parties. They shouldn't have a say-so on what goes in on their consoles. I understand sometimes you need to have some type of, you know, specs or whatever to make it some of the architecture to make it somewhat, you know, better. But let's be honest here, all right? The power of the cell was too advanced because you guys didn't want to learn it. It was too hard to learn, remember? That's what you said. That's why you went with the Xbox 360 back then because the architecture was easy to work for. That's why the games came out better for it as opposed to the PS4. And then Sony said, no, if you sit down and take your time and learn the architecture, you can make some beautiful games. Hello, Uncharted. But no one wants to talk about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. But you want more advanced technology. You want more, better. And then you screw over the consumers by coming out with mid-cycle consoles. But Nintendo should listen to third-party companies, right? Look, I put it like this. Nintendo does have their head up their ass, but they don't need to listen to EA. And they're bullshit. Let's move on to more Nintendo news. Nintendo Switch games price drop in the UK. We just talked about this last week. Nintendo needs to do more than price drop their games. They need to price drop their add-ons. The console, I understand you want to charge that. I get that. All right. All right. Fine. But you have to price drop those add-ons. Without that, you're going to sink in the water. Unless you're a hardcore Nintendo fanboy who cannot think about dollars and cents. Then right now, those add-ons are going to fuck you. And that's what needs to be dropped. The games, okay. You want to drop prices from them? Fine. Because they were 60 bucks. Drop them. Okay, I'm fine with that. Bring it back old school to the era of the PS2 when we were paying 40 bucks for games. I'm good with that. I'm good with it. You know what I mean? I'm okay with that. Matter of fact, if you wait a month or two, they'll drop down to 20 bucks anyway. Because the games come out so quick and get traded in so quick, the value loses. So whatever. You know what I mean? But you can't tell me, Nintendo, that you're not thinking about price dropping those add-ons. That is absolutely ridiculous. Let's move on, shall we? Nintendo News. Nintendo Switch won't have Netflix or other streaming services at launch. And some people are saying that this is a good thing. I don't see this as a good thing. In order to stay in competition with Sony and with Microsoft, because they're not just video game systems anymore. We've had this talk. They're multimedia systems that they want to make sure it's in every household simply for the fact that it's diverse, that it's versatile. Nintendo, now, like I said, it's not going to be there at launch. 
Meaning, it can come in the future. But, Nintendo, you should have all these things out. You should have all this stuff ready and ready to go. Especially, since you're charging for your online service. So again, you want people to pay so much money for a console, all these add-ons, all this stuff. When I can just go and get a PS4 or Xbox One for like 250 in a bundle, and it comes with all this stuff, I have to pay for online, but I'm still getting Netflix and all these other streaming services? That makes no sense. None whatsoever. I understand that you want to make sure that people are buying this because you want to focus strictly on games. I understand that. But the standard has changed these days. If you came to me during the PS3 era or the, the, the Xbox 360 era, I would be on board with you, Nintendo, with that. I would. Because we didn't need Facebook updates and all this other bullshit. We didn't need that. How many arguments did we see? Well, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox One, they need firmware updates for critical stuff that we need as gamers to keep going, and you're giving us Facebook integration. No one gives a shit about that. Like I said... Back then, I would have been for you, Nintendo. Now, you have to understand, in order to stay in the competition, in order to have a horse in this race, you should, you should come out the gate firing. If you cannot come out at launch and have these streaming services along with your games, there is a problem. A huge problem. Once again, you're handicapping yourself. So, your games are being price dropped, your add-ons are staying high as fuck, you gotta buy the console, of course, as well, and then you're telling me when we get to the, you know, the heart of it, of the stuff, with your network that we have to pay for, that you're giving us less features than Sony and Microsoft. Are you fucking serious? No. Like I said, until Nintendo gets their head out their ass, I cannot support them. But there's more Nintendo news. That's right. Nintendo Switch is predicted to sell 40 million units by 2020. That's a large number. 40 million units. The only way they're going to pull this off is if they do like they've done before. You know, limited quantities. Then have the scalpers raise the price. And then wait for, you know, for the next production to come out of them. That's the only way. By 2020, I don't know. Literally, you're giving Nintendo three years to do 40 million units. We'll see if it can happen. I'm not saying that it can't. But that is a large fucking number for three years. Just saying. 40 million units. With those prices, okay, let's keep going. Hopefully, as time goes on, as the units, as we know, as units sell, they, you know, they make a newer version or they price drop and stuff like that. So, it's possible. It's very possible it can happen. I'm not just saying, but still, that's a large number. That's a huge, that's just crazy, large number. Um, but Nintendo does have a lot of fans, so we'll see. Also, in more Nintendo news, and this is where I say, again, Nintendo has their head up their asses lying to you, okay? Nintendo confirms that Zelda, for the Wii U, will be the last title. That's right. That's the last game, the, the console's production. Last title. Games will still be sold, though. And online will still prevail. For how long is the question? Because, remember, Nintendo, you told us you were still going to support the Wii U for a very long time. Once the Switch came out. Now we see that you're lying about that. I mean, we knew it was going to happen. But you're straight up lying. And still, fans are like, oh my god, oh my god. Like I said last week, you want people to pay for your shitty online. Alright? Because that's what it is. Let's be honest here. It's horrible online. And don't tell me, Nintendo fans, that, you know, well, if they have online, the service will be better. No. They clearly still have problems with their online. They can't get it together. If that's the case, if you're going to use that excuse, then you're going to say, you're, you're pretty much taking a page out of Sony's book. Where, Sony's fan, where Sony fans were like, well, we're for free online, it's not that bad. Okay, now they're making us pay. Well, they got to make us pay so we can get dedicated servers and all this other stuff that Microsoft had. Even though when Microsoft started their pay for online, they didn't have dedicated servers either. And yet, all these, these, these services still get hacked to shit. But you're paying for it. Like I said, it makes no sense. At all. Nintendo's been lying. I can't support you this way. I can't. For a person who supported you throughout many years. All, damn near all the consoles. You know what I mean? Nintendo, Super Nintendo. Uh, was it GameCube? Uh, was it um, the Nintendo 64? I mean, who wasn't playing wrestling on Nintendo 64? You know what I mean? And Perfect Dark and all those. I mean, like, come on. Think about this type of stuff. The Wii I supported. The Wii U I supported. You know what I mean? Like, come on. And now you're pulling this shit. I can't support you. I can't. I, I just can't. So I'll go back and I'll stay with the Wii U. And I'll play Xenoblade Chronicles. 
and I'll play Monster Hunter and uh, every other game that I can play online with Mario Kart and all those other games I can play online until you decide to fucking kill it. It's crazy. Speaking of killing things, I think we need to talk about Resident Evil 7. Yes. For those who don't know, Resident Evil 7, let's talk about right now. Resident Evil 7. I played the demo. For those who uh, were, um, was it, who were, uh, who follow me on uh, Twitter, uh, you saw that I was, I was playing the demo. I was, I was posting screenshots, I was posting video as I was playing, you know what I mean? I was stopping and, you know, PS4 share and stuff like that. And you've got to be fucking kidding me that you make all the bad moves, all right, in a horror movie, like you said, horror fan. So when you do the same mistakes that horror fans hate, it's not going to be, it's not going to sit well with us. You can't tell me that I'm going to get up, or, you know, I don't know where I'm at, I'm waking up or whatever, and I get a chance to get out. Because it tells you, get the hell out the house. I get to the door, to the door, and you're telling me, well, this door's locked. You can't get out. So in reality, if I'm being held captive and I see a door, you're going to tell me I can't kick that bitch down? Are you going to tell me, and you're giving me at the time, you're giving me, what was it, um, uh, wire cutters or whatever, whatever you were giving me, all right? You're going to tell me I can't bust a window and get out? Are you telling me that these things really exist? But, 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 when it flashbacks, all right, and you go into the scene where, you, you know, you're holding the camera because it's like uh, found footage, and you, you're, it's a playable mode, and then the guys can't get in the house, but they're kicking in the door to get in the house. So I can't kick the door down to get out, but we can kick the door down to get in. Is that what you're telling me? So you're forcing me, pretty much, to go into the other room and then go upstairs. That's what you're forcing me to do. You are doing things that are so bad when it comes to horror 101, which is, common sense, go out the door instead of going up the steps. I don't understand this. Now, some of you said you know you like the game. It has a Texas Chainsaw Massacre feel. Some of Part Saw. Some still a little bit Resident Evil. It, it brings that eeriness to it. And you know what? Atmosphere-wise, I, I did enjoy the atmosphere. I did. I found myself saying a number of things. Especially when I first walked into the kitchen. I'm like, what kind of repugnant nasty shit is this? Bugs flying all over. Food all over the place. I understand. You know what I mean? They have to give you that feel. That grimy feel. But still, there's things that you just observe as you're playing. You know what I mean? Like I said, the game, the demo... While it's short, it does take from a number of things. I showed you one of what's with the, the secret passageway. First off, fuck Andre. Why the fuck? And I'm thinking to myself, because I'm fine watching him as we're talking in the kitchen. Why the fuck does he just walk off in the dark? Why does he just do that? Walk off in the dark and shit, and then you can't find him. Then you find this secret passageway out of nowhere, and then the guy's like, we need to find Andre. And I'm thinking to myself, no, his ass went out there to go on his own in the dark. Leave him be. Let's get it the hell out of here. That's on him. That's on him. I don't have, that's, that's, that's on Andre. And then you tell me we gotta go down the ladder, you're like, you go first. You go first. So you can get a hero shot of me. Motherfucker, you lying, you scared, I understand that. But don't don't make me go first when you the one that wants to find Andre. Alright? Then when I get down there, you pull Capcom, you pull this Blair Witch bullshit. Alright? Guy facing the facing the, you know, the wall and shit. Like I don't know what's getting ready to happen. You take and take and take in this type of situation. And this is just from the demo. Give them demo. I didn't even play a full game. This is the demo. So I can only imagine what the fucking full game is like. But when I first wake up, and I walk over to the piano, and the piano mysteriously closes on you, I'm like, are we talking supernatural stuff here, or are we just talking people who are crazy that are probably infected by a virus? So as far as I'm concerned, Capcom, for the demo... Like I said, I haven't played the full version. It seems like a lot of people are hating the full version. We've seen the ending. One of you spoiled it for me on Twitter. You sent me All you did was send me a screenshot of what's going on. And that pissed me off. All right? Not because you spoiled it for me, but because of what happened with Chris. As far as I'm concerned, this is something that, look, would I give this game a run? Yeah, when it drops to about 20 bucks, probably. I'm very interested, I will say, to see how the, the VR works for it. But then again, it's in first person as it is. Right? Wasn't that what Kevin said? We wanted to make it first person so that it's it's more, you know, it's it's more personal, more intuitive. Okay, so then what the hell's the difference between the first person and the VR? I mean, it's just tunnel vision. You're still having tunnel vision, right? Put the headphones on, you're gonna hear sounds come from one ear to the other. Been done. It's been done. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't know what you can gain from the the, the VR. I'm, like I said, I'm still interested to see what VR can bring. But, what would be the difference? I don't know. 
There's a lot of questions I have about Resident Evil 7 without even playing the full version that Capcom really hasn't opened the can of worms on. This just happened. And this is just me playing the demo. That's it. From a big horror fan, the demo for me was disappointing. Atmosphere, not bad. You know what I mean? I'll give them points for that. All right? Dialogue, atrocious. Because you were literally setting this up like it's some stupid-ass found footage movie. Which, if that's the angle you were going for, fine. Okay. All right? But we know how found footage movies end. Do we not? But, that's not all. Then, there's this little shiny nugget that Capcom decided to pull on you. Are you fucking kidding me again? Season fucking pass. Like I said, if you add this shit up, so last week, Injustice Season Pass. So if you get Injustice, okay, Season Pass, you gotta get that. This week, Tekken Season Pass. If you want the characters and all that stuff, you gotta get Season Pass. If you got Resident Evil 7, Season Pass. So I guess I gotta get the Season Pass if I want, you know, if I want all the stuff for Resident Evil 7. Do you understand what the fuck is going on? You know how much money this shit is? Seriously, now I say this from a person who does pay bills, who has people to take care of, not people who sit around just have expendable cash. That's who they want, people who have expendable cash, or people who don't pay the shit themselves. But you have to understand that this shit is a fucking headache. It is. And like I said, if I had these problems with the demo along, like I said, from a horror fan, I, I don't even want to consider myself a horror buff, but I guess I could take the Sarkeesian route and call myself a pop culture critic or a horror critic. Oh my god, then if I keep saying it, then it must be true, right? It must be. But for a person who watches a lot of horror movies since he was a little kid, like I said, to this day, every night, I watch at least two to three horror movies. Horror movies. I watch them so much. And to see the cues that Resident Evil took, all right, and knowing when something's going to pop out, when something's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know your stuff. You know what I mean? Unless you let yourself let yourself go and just be engulfed in the situation, it doesn't work. It doesn't. But you know when shit's going to happen. It's not that hard to figure out. You know what I mean? And like I said, when they were talking in the kitchen, I simply, I was just panning over to where Andre was like this. And I'm just watching Andre while the other dude's talking. And I'm seeing that he's just walking off. He's just walking off. And I'm thinking to myself, where's he going? Where's he going? Don't tell me you're going to pull this whisper in the wind bullshit. And then he just walks off and you don't find him until later. Which is fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. It's the obvious, you know what I mean? You shouldn't split up, but we're going to split up anyway, and that's when shit happens. Like, come on. We know this. I and mean, fucking Scooby-Doo teaches you this shit. Like, come on. Come on. So, yeah. The demo, while they said atmosphere was fine, they did a good job. I'll say graphically they did a good job. Um, but other than that, I'm just... Yeah. Like I said, I don't have my hands on a full game, so I can only imagine how that is. But like I said, people seem to be very upset with this game. Like, people who bought the full game. I, I don't know. I would like to hear more opinions on Resident Evil 7 if you bought it or not. You know, and if it's, if it's worth buying and, you know, and stuff like that. But, given the spoilers, given the ending that I saw that y'all sent me. Y'all just sent, like I said, you, you come on Twitter. I go to my mentions because I see I have a number of mentions. Go on mentions. This is a big fucking screenshot of Chris Redfield. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is the ending. Which feels more like a Captain America type, what they just tried to do a Captain America type ending. You know, I don't know. But this is just, to me, it's whatever. But apparently though, there will be a Resident Evil 8, I guess. Um, yeah. Like I said, they just took from so much this time around. Like I said, we already knew that they were taking from Silent Hill. Um, now we know they take from the Blair Witch. Um, they just take a number of tropes from horror game, uh, horror movies. It's not really reinventing the wheel, you know what I mean? It's really not. But maybe it will do well. We'll see. We've seen media try to give this game so much credit and give it 9s and 10s and people were freaking out that they got 9s and 10s. Then we saw IGN give it, what, a 7.7? Which, to me, I don't understand how you give a game a 7.7. Once you hit 7.5, you just fucking round up. That's all you do. A 7.7. What the fuck is a 7.7? Stop. Stop. You want to give it an 8? Give it an 8. I'm fine with that. I don't really give a shit about scores. I don't, because as you know, media can't really be trusted that much. But you've got to be kidding me that you're giving it a 7 point fucking 7. Like, what the fuck is that shit? Let's move on, shall we? And good news! Good news! Double Dragon 4! That's right, when that's coming out not too long, I believe, um, it's supposed to be six ninety nine or something like that when it comes out. Um, we'll have online co-op, it will have local co-op, it will have story mode, dual mode, and tower mode, and of course, play share. And now, of course, this game will be for PS4 and the PC. 
So, so far, Double Dragon 4 is on my radar. I can't wait for this game to come out. I'm, I'm going to get this game. I believe it comes out, what, January 31st or something like that? I will be getting this game. And I will be looking online to play. I will be play sharing. This will be fun. This is a game I definitely want to play. So I used to play Double Dragon with friends in the arcades. Let alone this, this, online co-op, local co-op. I'm sold. $6.99? I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm sold. Granted, the storyline, for what I hear, is going to be messed up because it's not following something. But regardless, I'm willing to give it a shot. You know what I mean? Let's move on. In more news. Overwatch, that's right. Year of the Rooster is now live, alright? Now, I'm seeing a lot of people having some problems with getting all this stuff from Year of the Rooster. So what I'm going to do for you Overwatch fans, alright? If you're having problems, I will put a link in the info bar. That is a guide, that's right, that will help you get all the stuff that you need from the Year of the Rooster campaign. Now, of course, we've seen as of late what's been going on with the Year of the Rooster, you know? And SJWs are already upset because cultural appropriation. Are you fucking serious? Stop. Get some help. You can't just find something every time and complain about it. What are you doing to change things? Other than sitting on Twitter and complaining. Hmm? I'm just wondering. Unreal. Let's move on. Also, in some more good news, this is for Xbox fans. Uh, Path of the Exile is coming to Xbox One, and it is free to play. Okay? So, that's coming to Xbox One soon, so Xbox One fans have something to play. You know what I mean? We just saw not too long ago after what happened with Scalebound that people was like, Ho, oh, oh, ho, you don't have any exclusives, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Path of the Ex Exile is coming out, free to play. Have at it. You know what I mean? Enjoy your games. And I say that for everybody. Also, in more news, which is kind of weird. I, I, I have a problem with this. Alright? After shutdown, Disney Infinity developer reopens to do Cars 3. Or do a game of Cars 3. Now, as we know, Cars 3, the movie, is getting ready to come out soon. So, of course, they're going to try to tag on a game to that, you know, so they get some sales for that. But Disney Infinity, look, look, Disney, why didn't you bring back, look, I'm still waiting for you to bring back Disney Interactive so that we can get another split second. How do you not do that? But you bring these guys back because Cars, because, you know, the game is going to, you know, cater to kids. People are still going to run and see it. And now this. I'm so tired of Disney. I'm just so tired of Disney. First, you whore out the Star Wars license down this. I'm just, I'm, I'm tired of you. And the Marvel license. Let me get started the Marvel license. Oh, my God. Let, let's move on. Also, in the last bit of news. Video game actor strike has now reached day 96, which makes this the second longest strike in SAG history. Video game developers, you have, not just the, I shouldn't say developers, the publishers as well. The, look, this can't keep going on. Unless you're going to make games and, and highlight games, once again, that you don't need voice acting for. Some of the best games ever have been created have been without voice acting. You know what I mean? All we need is text. I mean, besides, who's not going to read? I mean, it helps our literacy. So why not give us text? I understand that everybody wants to have this movie production buzzet and all this other bullshit, but not every game needs it. Not all games need it. As far as I'm concerned, granted, there's some games that would not do well if it didn't have it. Let's be honest here. Heavy Rain would not be the same if it didn't have voice acting, all right? The new, was it that new Detroit game that, uh, was it, that they're getting ready to make, uh, would not be the same if it didn't have voice acting. Um, there's just a number of games that he rely heavily on voice acting. It just does. And we know that. But you've got to be kidding me that this is still going on. Is there, is the negotiations not going well? I mean, what is going on that two sides, being adults, cannot sit down and hash out these problems? What's the problem? The video game industry has made a number of, um, mistakes, as we know, in the previous couple of years. We know that the, you know, we saw from the charts last week, and I talked about it earlier, that, you know, your, your core base, you know, your consumer base is down uh, by a lot. 180 million, they said something, 140, 180 million is down a lot. Not to mention, we see developers who have this cocky attitude who are quick, or even publishers who are quick to trash not just other consumers, but also other companies. I don't understand why. I don't. You have to understand, as the industry, you are together. This is where you're at. If you keep playing this divide and conquer role, nobody's going to, nobody's going to succeed. Nobody. And with all these bad business practices that are going on, that's definitely going to push away gamers. You've got to stop this. The only people who are going to buy this are yes men, shills, and fanboys. So when I say, look, this is a problem with the game that I just played, and I just played the demo, and of course people will say, well, it's not the full version, which is a fair argument. But when you come along and you bring out a season pass, what the fuck is that? Give us the full game. You know what I mean? Seems like people don't want to do it these days. But there will be people who say, that's how business is these days. You just have to accept it. You're just crying. No, it doesn't have to be that these days. You choose to accept that. 
Again, I don't understand you. I just don't. Do people like... I mean, seriously, this is how I see it. People like spending more money than they need to for video games than as opposed to before. Is that what it is? I mean, because if that's what it is, if, if you want to spend more money than you need to, which that other money could go to another game, then you're an idiot. You just are. That's what it, that's what it comes down to. I don't understand people these days. I don't understand the, the community these days. People would rather argue and degrade people to keep the game that they love on top, which makes no sense. Everybody deserves their fair share of awareness, of, you know, their fair share of credit, right? Don't tell me that Marvel should still be on top when it's been out for years, and they still haven't fixed it, as opposed to a game like Guilty Gear or Undernight or Melty or something like that, which, give them their credit for once. No, it's got to be, the, these, these are the games that have to be up top. That's it. That makes no sense to me. And they act like if these games do make it, mind you, this is all corporation stuff, other than the fan voting. This is all corporation stuff. Even with fan voting, you got to think, corporations are watching. They're like, okay, let's see who they vote in. Okay, this game still has legs. We can still, we can still throw out some tournaments for this. We can still make money off of this. We can still advertise the fuck out of this. Because that's what they're waiting for with fan voting. That's why I said I can't... I'm hoping that people troll the fan vote and put up something that people just forgot all completely. Companies are watching. It's all statistical data. It's all it is. So when you want to fight over said game being up top, and let's say your game makes it, yeah, we won. You didn't win shit. You didn't win a damn thing. This arguing back and forth, this divide and conquer does not help anybody. And if this is the mentality of games right now, regardless if it's esports, regardless if it's just a community in general, it, it's not going to survive this way. It's done. It's amazing how all these people always talk about how they're adults and how they know what they know better than most people, yet they never take the stance on trying to unite you know, a, a community. They always talk about positivity, but they never display it. They never lead by example. They never talk about it. It's weird. It's very weird. It's a lot of two-faced snake shit going on. It just is. It just is. And when I say positivity, I don't mean kissing developers' asses or kissing said company's ass who just came out with a new AAA game. No. Positivity as in how the community is helping each other through hard times. Positivity of, of how developers are hurting and how the community comes to pick said developer up. That's positivity. Not, oh my god, Tekken, get ready to come out. I need, I, I need to kiss this ass so that they can understand what I'm doing. This is not about you. Or any of you shills. It's not. If you're here for personal gain, this is why I've really hated about the community for a very long time. Ever since fucking YouTube, alright? And I'll say that, ever since fucking YouTube, when anyone can put their face out there, now it's because, you know, it's, it's a one-way uh, track to just doing things for myself. Self-gratification. Instant gratification. As opposed to the arcades, if we had these type of conversations in arcades... First off, the way people talk these days, it wouldn't even people wouldn't be talking to each other that way because somebody would get the ass whipped. But on top of it, you have to understand that they're just opinions. People would just be like, hmm, "Got right, opinion, keep playing." But now, since people can garner fan bases and massage their ego, it just seems to me that people have just lost the entire point of what gaming was about. It brought us together to have fun, not my game is better than yours. Or this game is coming out, you should support it because I say so. No. It's never been about that. You make the decision on what you want to buy. Alright? But when things go bad, don't get salty about it. And don't try to justify your purchase either. You don't have to. You don't have to get into an argument somebody to justify your purchase. I bought the game. Okay, it did bad. But I still like it. End of story. That's it. That's why I always tell you. If you like the game, I'm not going to argue with you about it. There's no point. No point. If you come in and tell me Resident Evil is really good, you should give it a go when it comes to, you know, you know, when it comes to the full version. Okay, I'll take that into consideration. I'm not, I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm for it. But I'm also going to be like, I'm not going to be like, get the fuck out of here, this is garbage. No. Like I said, for things I've seen in that demo, it made me mad because they follow a number of tropes that you know it's coming. It was predictable. You know what I mean? But other than that, it doesn't mean I hate the fucking game. I'm just being very critical about it because of the, f the fact that years and years of watching horror movies, you'd think that they would do something different. 
Just saying. Anyways, I will talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. That's the end of the video. I'm done. Seriously, I'm, I'm fucking done. Until next week. Y'all be safe. I'm out.